This is our future, our hope, that we will see his face. Heaven's not clouds and harps and weird wings. I don't know where they'd grow. It's, it's knowing God as we're known. With no one in between and everything that that brings. And actually, we need to ask God to help us to see the wonder of what he's going to show us today. And our first song, therefore, which is really a prayer, picks up on our need of God to send his spirit to make us new, to make our imagination in line with all that he has for us. Thanks, Jeff. great to be able to just pause and ask God to do his thing, the thing that he loves to do, to bring us to himself. Our family news this morning, uh, there are a few different parts to our family news. Just first of all, Kathy wanted me to say she's, uh, she feels like, she wanted to know why she's not here. Uh, she's down in Canberra having a kitchen tea for Anna, our oldest daughter, um, 
the, Anna's getting married in two weeks' time. And uh, so she just wanted to say that's why she's not here. Of course, she won't be here next weekend either because of the weekend away, church weekend away. And then she won't be here the weekend after because of the wedding. So that's why you won't see her for a while. Uh, uh, next week as well, because of the weekend away, there won't be any kids' church um, uh, operating, uh, and we'll put that in the newsletter this week as well for those who aren't here this morning. Um, but really what I want to turn the rest of the time over to this morning is just saying farewell to Stephen and Caitlin. So you guys better come up here, I think. Um, Stephen and Caitlin, uh, we had no idea last year when you approached me about being student ministers here what this year would look like. <laughs> And it's been the, the most crazy and the, the uh, um, yeah, you guys have got a raw deal, I think. <laughs> but on the other hand, you've kind of seen things you wouldn't see, yeah. So I want you to quickly tell us um, uh, what you're doing right now and what's in the near future for you. Um, well, at the moment, we're frantically packing uh, our, our place up. Um, most of our stuff is being moved on Wednesday to Kelso, and then we're moving on Saturday, because uh, that's when the lease is up for our place, so that's what we'll be doing. Um, Caitlin finished her last essay yesterday, so um, it's good to get that done. So college is done, uh, waiting on results. So we'll be in Bathurst for two weeks um, before I get ordained on the 12th of December, uh, and then we'll go down to the south coast of New South Wales and have some holidays with my family over Christmas, which will be lovely. And Caitlin, uh, what would you tell us, what was your essay on? And what's, what's the thing you're looking forward to about next year the most? Mm. Um, my essay was on uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, um, the first part of that, it was an exegetical, um, looking at Paul's life and work and ministry and how he lived among the Thessalonians um, when he was with them. So that was fun. Um, 4,000 words and it's all done. Um, yeah, uh, next year. Um, I think I'm most looking forward to um, being a part of a community and getting to know people and meeting neighbours, um, which I found really hard to do here in Sydney, um, and just, um, yeah, learning about a new place um, and meeting some new people. Um, yeah. Yeah, great. Yep. And, Caitlin, just stay there for a moment. Um, as you head off, mm. we want to uh, send you on your way with uh, just some small, a small gift or two. Mm. Um, but what um, what it would be good to do would be to to stay in touch with you about how, you know, what what we can pray for you. Yeah. Um, uh, have you got one or two things we could pray for you mm. now? Yeah. Um, uh, pray that we would get rest. Um, this year at college has been a hard slog um, with all the COVID stuff and all the changes. Um, so, yeah, pray that we would get rest um, over the next few weeks and heading into Christmas. Um, we're seeing Steve's family for the first time since March, so that will be really lovely. Um, but also that we would be refreshed and ready to start um, in, at the church um, next year. I think that probably is the first one. Um, yeah, I think pray that we would have a heart for people as we start, that we would have a heart that cares about getting to know people and figuring out what God is doing in their lives and how we could be a part of that. Cool. I think um, that's our real dream for next year is that we would really get to know people and what God's doing for them and how we can be a part of that. Great, yeah. thanks. And Stephen, you in particular? Yeah, um, I think, yeah, that I would just be really ready uh, to serve God in, in Kelso and the congregation there and just to make him known uh, in Kelso and in Bathurst. Um, there's a lot of people who have uh, been turned away from the church for various reasons um, and they're the people I really want to reach and to say, um, yeah, the offer still stands. Forgiveness is still there for sins. Jesus is still Lord. Um, come back to him. I think that's my real heart, desire, and my prayer for the next couple of years, um, that, that that would be the work that I can be part of uh, in the church out there. Cool. So. Well, why don't you stay here while I pray for you in those terms. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much uh, for getting these guys through the arduous years of college. We thank you for um, uh, bringing them together at college, the excitement of meeting and getting married to each other, 
and we thank you and praise you for your gift to them of each other and we pray for their marriage father that it might continue to point to jesus and the way that he has loved us his people father please help help stephen and caitlin as they uh, endure together in ministry and as they uh, strive together uh, in their marriage uh, help them father to keep looking to jesus to provide them with all they need and to be the one that they want to present to others and father we pray uh, giving you thanks that college has come to an end and that last essay is done we thank you father for all these guys have learned and we pray that as they spend the next few years in kelso um, that you might help them to remember what they've learned and to be able to put that into practice help them father to keep on learning and growing um, especially we pray for their relationships with people in kelso and bathurst and the, and the wider area we know there are many there who have heard something of the gospel of Jesus and no doubt things which are also not really of you. And we pray, Father, that you might give Stephen and Caitlin such a love for those people and you might open their hearts uh, that Stephen and Caitlin might be able to share the good news of Jesus with them. We ask you, Father, to revive your church, church in all its parts. In Jesus' name, amen. And before you go, my beautiful, I mean, my assistant has a, a, a little gift for you. Um, and we have one or two other things as well, which will come to you in due course. No so, uh, can you tell us, can we write there's going to be a card up, up the back? Gloria, are you going to be... There's a card already yeah, circulating. Yeah, yep. so Gloria is going to um, man it, so if you don't shake hands. <laughs> uh, yeah, so there'll be a card. She'll sign for you. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Um, can I just say thank you to all of you for uh, welcoming us here this year uh, with everything that's happening, for sharing your lives with us. Um, thank you for yeah, just being an encouragement to us, for praying for us, um, for giving me such great feedback when I've preached. You've made me a better preacher. That's not what you said before. No. <laughs> <laughs> You've helped me grow in that. I'm really very thankful to you all for that. So thank you from us um, for allowing us to be here this year. Yeah. Cool. A minute for mission this morning uh, is about Japan. Japan is made up of four large islands and nearly 7,000 small islands. Its closest neighbours are China, North and South Korea, as well as the eastern part of Russia. It has a population of close to 130 million. Japan's culture is one that is influenced by ancient traditions and beliefs. Yes, it is a country that is technologically advanced and has one of the highest literacy rates in the world. The traditional religion of Japan is Shinto, or the way of the gods. Its followers worship the emperor, the sun and other created things, as well as spirits of fire and water. Shinto and Buddhism are the main religions in Japan. People don't see a problem of worshipping more than one god. Even though there have been Christian missions in Japan for many years, there's only an estimated 0.5% evangelical Christians in the country. Most people see Christianity as a foreign religion. Many Japanese believe that if they became Christian and worshipped only Jesus, they would be turning against family, ancestors and culture. It is rare for whole families to be Christians, so individuals who trust in Jesus can often feel quite alone. About 70% of all churches have an average attendance of less than 30. The membership is often double this figure. This is due to many people having to work on Sundays. Please pray that many in Japan will come to know the Creator God rather than seeking solace in created things. Please ask God to help Christians in Japan to show others that God loves them. This is a difficult concept for Japanese to understand. Please pray that Christians will worship only Jesus and pray that the Japanese church will grow in number 
in unity and have sound teaching from the Bible. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the persistent witness of your people in Japan, despite the small numbers of people who've turned to Jesus so far. We know, Father, from your word that you love all people and you sent your son because we're far away from you. And so, Father, would you please be at work amongst Japanese Christians to help them to know especially and to not give up believing that you love them and that you've got a place for them to continue to share that love with their fellow citizens. Father, would you strengthen them to know you, the creator God? Father, would you fill them with a satisfaction with you? that they might be able to sacrificially love those around them, liberate them, Father, from all the constraints, the many constraints that Japanese culture places on people. Father, would you free them to love? And Father, we pray uh, that, especially because it's a difficult thing for Japanese Christians to, to know, um, and Father, we want to see your church grow in Japan. We ask all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, our Bible readings this morning have got two big symbols in them. The city of God and the bride of Christ. And our readings come from the Old Testament and the New Testament. And Jeff and Ross are reading for us. And I'm going to pray uh, before they read, or as Jeff's coming up, and then John will come and speak after the readings. Father, please open our hearts and minds as we hear your word. Give us that due sense of what is going on when we read your word together. Father, would you help us to be ready to listen and to honour you with our obedience and trust in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, Jeff. Ezekiel chapter 47, starting at verse 1. The man brought me back to the entrance to the temple, and I saw water coming out from under the threshold of the temple towards the east, where the temple faced east. The water was coming down from under the south side of the temple, south of the altar. He then brought me out through the north gate and led me around the outside to the outer gate facing east, and the water was trickling from the south side. As the man went eastward with a measuring line in his hand, he measured off a thousand cubits and then led me through water that was ankle deep. He measured off another thousand cubits and led me through water that was knee deep. He measured off another thousand and led me through water that was up to the waist. He measured off another thousand, but now it was a river that I could not cross because the water had risen and was deep enough to swim in, a river that no one could cross. He asked me, Son of man, do you see this? This is the end of the reading. Good morning. Um, our second reading is taken from uh, Revelation 21, and verse 9 is where we start. And again, just continuing on about the new Jerusalem here, um, as we began to look at last week. One of the seven angels, who had the seven bowls full of the seven last plagues, came and said to me, Come, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. And he carried me away in the spirit to a mountain great and high, and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. It shone with the glory of God, and its brilliance was like that of a very precious jewel, like a jasper, clear as crystal. It had a great high wall with twelve gates, and with twelve angels at the gates. 
On the gates were written the names of the 12 tribes of Israel. There were three gates on the east, three on the north, three on the south, and three on the west. The wall of the city had 12 foundations, and on them were the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. The angel who talked with me had a measuring rod of gold to measure the city, its gates and its walls. The city was laid out like a square, as long as it is wide. He measured the city with the rod and found it to be 12,000 stadia in length and as wide and high as it is long. The angel measured the wall using human measurement and it was 144 cubits thick. The wall was made of jasper and the city of pure gold as pure as glass. The foundations of the city walls were decorated with every kind of precious stone. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third agate, the fourth emerald, the fifth onyx, the sixth ruby, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth beryl, the ninth topaz, the tenth turquoise, the eleventh jacinth, and the twelfth amethyst. The twelve gates were twelve pearls, each gate made of a single pearl. The great street of the city was of gold, as pure as transparent glass. I did not see a temple in the city, because the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. The city does not need the sun or the moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gives it light, and the Lamb is its lamp. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their splendour into it. On no day will its gates ever be shut, for there will be no night there. The glory and honour of the nations will be brought into it. Nothing impure will ever enter it, nor will anyone who does what is shameful or deceitful, but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life as clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb down the middle of the great street of the city. On each side of the river stood the tree of life, bearing twelve crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be any curse, the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in the city and his servants will serve him. They will see his face and his name will be on their foreheads. There will be no more night. They will not need the light of a lamp or the light of the sun for the Lord God will give them light and they will reign for ever and ever. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Ross. Uh, just in case you know, there is a copy of the sermon just sitting there. So if you want one, grab one later. Or if you want one now, stick your hand up. And do you want anyone want one now? Okay. <laughs> About five of them. <laughs> and uh, Tim's going to. And I'm out. Uh, Tim's already prayed, so uh, let's get started. Friends, we have uh, actually arrived. We arrived at the end, at the end of our sermon series. But also in Revelation, this is the end of God's revelation to us. God doesn't tell us anymore 
of what happens next after this. Yes, it's the end, but it's also the beginning, the beginning of eternity. 